to talk about bringing a supplied program or a G code program written in a CAM, CAM package and use it in the conversational environment to show the versatility of the Herco control. Here we see a G code program, FANUC style program, that is engraving the word Herco. You see it there in the graphics on the right. That's all this program does. It's a specific size and it engraves Herco, calling the center of that particular word zero. And one of the things we hear when we talk about to a shop, it's a G-code only shop, yeah, but I don't, I'm never going to use your conversational control and I don't want to learn a new control anyway. Well, first of all, you don't ever have to use the conversational control, but in this video I do want to show you some of the versatility that you get by having that available to you, but also I want to talk about the fact that Setting up a Herco is no different than setting up any other machine. We have to do the same things that you have to do on other machines, and it's very familiar once you get into it. Here you see our tool setup screen. This is what we use for the conversational side of the control. But you notice we have a tool offset screen. If I click on that tool offset button, it takes me to the tool length offset table. There's 200 of them. It's a G43H value called in the program just like it is on any other NC machine. We have another one there for tool radius offsets. Again, we have 200 just like FANUC. This is your D register. I'm going to call a G41 or a G42 with a D value, and this value represents this table somewhere on here. We also have the tool corner radius offsets for those people who like to use three dimensional cutter compensation. This would be the corner of a bullnose tool, for example. So the familiarization that you have with the current machine tool is going to be just the same on a Herco. It's just that the screen may look a little different, but it's still there, set up the same way. There's no learning curve as far as that's concerned at all. Now, how am I going to call this NC program within a conversational program? If I'm not going to use it in this, in this versatile um, way that I'm going to show here, then I just simply open the G-code program like you do on any other machine and hit cycle start. But if I want to bring it into a conversational program so I can then begin to use it within patterns, scaling, um, and so forth, then I have to call it with what we call an NC merge block. Those of you who program with, with uh, NC subprogram calls, you're going to do an M98 with a P and then whatever the program number is. It's no different here. We're going to insert a conversational block called an NC program call. The program number, which is your P number, is going to be the same as whatever's at the top of your NC program, and it's going to bring that program in no different than what you're used to. You put an M99 at the end of that main program. When it's done, it jumps back out to the main program. I'm sorry, you put an M99 at the end of that subprogram. When it's done, it jumps back out to the main program, which in this case just happens to be a conversational program. So now I'm going to do a loop linear. I'm going to take this NC program and I'm going to put it in three different locations in a linear fashion. Well, how do I do that? Well, you can see that the loop linear block at the top left there asks how many times you want to repeat the program. I want to do it three times. What is your distance between each one in X and Y? I'm not moving anything in X, but I am going positive Y by two inches. So I took that Herco, the bottom one in this example, is my original, and then I patterned it again two inches above in Y, again another two inches in Y. Once that has been created or completed, it's then going to jump back out to the main program. So how does that look in the program? See the bottom example. We have a pattern linear. It's going to do it three times. Everything after that is going to continue to be patterned until it sees pattern end. Here we're going to do a loop rotate with scale and mirror. So we took the, the existing program, we scaled it down, and then we mirror image it. So here's first of all the mirror. We're going to mirror image 90 degrees, I'm sorry, 180 degrees over to the other side. So now you see the Herco on the right is backwards. It is going to keep the original. We don't have to. 
and this will automatically put something in the uh, block whether to uh, reverse your tool path or not. So if you were climb milling on the original, you're going to be continued to climb mill on the um, mirror image side. Then we have a loop rotate where we're going to rotate the part or the uh, program 45 degrees in the positive direction and then here we scaled it. We programmed this particular word from the center so we're scaling it to half size in the X and Y. Same depth but we just made it smaller in X and Y. Then we have our program call, our NC program call here, block four in the image in the bottom left corner, and then we end each one of those patterns. So we get something to look like that. Now we're going to scale and do a loop rectangular. So we've scaled it down from the original size, and we're going to put it in a pattern where there's four along the x-axis, five along the y-axis. Very similar to maybe you have one program, G-code program, that's going to put cavities in a mold or something like that. Here's your loop rectangular, the pattern scale, which we've already seen, only went down to a quarter scale this time. And we can also do this in five axis. I can take that same program using something called a transform plane, and I can put that NC program on five sides of a block if I wish to. Here we see in the example rotary position, which is going to straighten up, you know, put everything in its vertical and upright position. We call the NC program. It's going to do it on the top of the part. Block three in this case is a transform plane. We're going to move the origin point, or what we're going to call zero. In this case, we're going to do this on the front of the part. So we went from the original zero on the top center, three inches towards the operator in Y. We drop down three inches in Z. That puts the new origin point at the center of that front side. And then we just simply rotate around the X 90 degrees towards the operator. We call the NC program. It runs it in that location. We end it. We would do the same thing for the right side, the left side, the back side, what have you. So very easy to see how versatile the uh, conversational control can be with customers who think they will never even use conversational and they only program in G-code.